Okay, so as we move on, we're going to try and combine what you've seen so far about chi-squared distributions into a formal hypothesis test. So there'll be some aspects of the hypothesis test that you would recognize and maybe a few new aspects to pay attention to. Here, we've been told to test at the 5% significance level whether or not the observed frequencies can be modeled by a discrete uniform distribution. Okay, so the first thing that I need to find out here is what are the expected values? Well, if this is meant to be discrete uniform, each of these outcomes is equally likely. There's six outcomes. So the probability of each of these outcomes happening is one sixth. If we multiply that by the total number of trials, we know the expected frequency for each of the outcomes. The expected frequency for one is 20. The expected frequency for two will also be 20 and so on for the rest of the outcomes. The very first thing to do, just like with every hypothesis test, is to state the hypotheses. Here are hypotheses. As we've mentioned before, the null hypothesis is that we have a good fit. The expected values that we're thinking of, the expected values that match a discrete uniform distribution are a good fit for the observed distribution, are a good fit for the experiment that's been carried out. The alternate hypothesis is that it's not a good fit. Next, I'm going to state the significance level. We're told in the question, this is 5%. And I'm going to calculate my degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, 6 minus 1 equals 5. I did have a quick check if all the expected values were larger than 5. And they were actually all 20. So instantly, I know that they're all suitable. Okay, next, I'm going to calculate the critical value. I'm going to look this up in the tables. So, a chi-squared score with five degrees of freedom and a 5% level is 11.070. I'm gonna put this onto the graph. Anything in this shaded region is going to be a significant result. Anything in this shaded region is going to provide evidence that suggests we should reject the null hypothesis. So, Let's go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So just as we did before, the observed minus the expected, we're gonna square that and divide by the expected. We'll do that for all of the corresponding pairs of observed and expected values. Try out the whole calculation. Simplifying a little so I can track my working out. And we get 3.4. 3.4 is not in the critical region. 3.4 is not in the rejection region. 3.4 is not significant. 3.4 is less than 11.07. So there is not enough evidence to reject H0. And in context, there is not enough evidence. And in context, there is evidence to suggest the dice was actually fair. Okay, so let's check another example. This time there's going to be a few more cells to work with. Alan has a, Alan has two four-sided spinners numbered one to four. He carries out experiments where he spins them at the same time and adds their scores together. He does 160 experiments and has recorded his observed frequencies below. Okay. Um, we're given the expected frequencies, but we would be able to find them if we made a sample space diagram for the two spinners. The first thing to do here is to set the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is to say that the expected distribution is a good fit for Allen Spinner. As in, the expected distribution describes what will happen with Allen's spinner quite well. The alternate hypothesis says that the expected distribution is not a good fit for Allen's spinner. The differences between the expected and the observed values are just too much for us to conclude that, that the model is a good fit for the spinner. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do the usual. I'm going to state the significance level. We've got 2.5% today. The degrees of freedom, all of the expected values are above 5. So I can just go ahead and do 7 minus 1 to get 6. The critical value this time around is quite large, 14.449. So I'm going to put it on the diagram. Then I'm going to get busy with calculating the test statistic. Test statistic, the observed minus the expected, square that, divide by the expected. So we're getting a proportion of difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and process that calculation. And we actually get 16.008. This is larger than the critical value. This is inside the critical region. Our result is significant. So we can conclude that there is enough evidence to reject H0. In context, that means that we have sufficient evidence to say that the model is not a good fit for Alan Spinner. We have evidence to think that actually these spinners, they're not even fair. These spinners are likely to be biased. So just making sure you have your two conclusions, one mathematical referring to H0 and one in context referring to the actual spinners and whether or not the model is a good fit. So, there should be many similarities to all the hypothesis tests that you've conducted before and just a few new steps thrown in as well. But if we were to sum it up, our first step would be to determine which distribution we're going to be working with, which distribution would be most appropriate. So far, we've either looked at a discrete uniform distribution or we've been given some proportions or expected values to work with. Soon, we might only be told, uh, test whether a binomial distribution is a good fit, or test whether a Poisson distribution is a good fit. So the first step is just to identify the distribution whose fit we're trying to check. Second step will be to set the significance level. Third, estimate parameters. We'll come back around to this. Fourth is to state your hypotheses. Following that, we need to make sure we've calculated our expected frequencies. We're looking out to make sure we combine any frequencies that are less than five. Then we'll go on to find the degrees of freedom. We can use those to find a critical value in the tables. From there, we can calculate our test statistic. And finally, we can compare for significance and we can write up our conclusions. This isn't a rigid order in which we should do all of these things, but it's definitely a checklist that we need to make sure we've checked for each of these as we make our way through our hypothesis test. Okay, I'll leave you to get some practice in on a few straightforward questions, and we'll come back again to look at specific distributions and how we conduct a hypothesis test for those.